it's all about humanity. And here we are again, people. It is good to be with you all. I am Brian, the UK Bitcoin master. This is your bullish Bitcoin channel, the alternative to the crappy lying BBC. Um, actually, I'm going to have to turn that down, otherwise you're going to see it. That checks my sound is working. Uh, today is the 11th of April 2024. As always, have a strong Bitcoin hand. If you're new, build a strong Bitcoin hand. That is how you hold through the downturns, the bear markets, etc. I can see you all joining. Welcome in, everyone. Great to have you all uh, in the house. Oh, crikey, my, I've gone a bit blurred there. Sorry, people. I don't know what's happening with my camera, but I'm going a bit blurred. It is what it is. If you're new, so important you read the disclaimer down there. You ain't going to get any financial advice here, people, so don't come looking for it. Before we get into this, uh, I want to give a shout out to Bitcoin to the Moon down in Australia, uh, who is probably about 3 a.m. So heaven knows what he's doing awake, but uh, he may have fell asleep by the time I get back to saying hi to all you guys in the chat. So I'll say hello right now. Uh, Bitcoin to the Moon, you should be asleep, man. But again, it's great to have you in the house. Very, very quickly, if you are not on the Orange Pill app, I would encourage you to get on it. Um, the the way to build a social layer of Bitcoin, if you want to use my link in the show notes, get yourself 10,000 free sats, I would strongly advise you to do that. Also in the show notes, there's a link to my social media page. Do go there and check that out. Um, if I go down to the... Um, where are we? Hold on a second. I'm trying to make a change here. There we go. I've got a shout out to the show sponsors. People, bear with me. Uh, the best of Exmoor, great holiday company in the southwest corner of the UK. Whether you're looking for seaside cottages, whether you're looking for pet friendly cottages, over 200 there. They kindly supported my show. You can see top left, they are Bitcoiners or Chris is a Bitcoiner. Um, he accepts payment in Bitcoin or currency for his holidays. And I'll tell you, they've all got close to 10 out of 10 rating on TripAdvisor. So I would encourage you to check them all out. If you want to know where it is in the UK, there it is, the Red Dot, Exmoor National Park, southwest of the UK. So I would encourage you all at least to check them out because you can pay in Bitcoin, you can pay in currency. You can also get further discounts on your holidays. Uh, my wife and I are going down there September this year to experience one of the holiday cottages for the first time right on the ocean, uh, which I'm excited about. Walk out the door, cross the road, and there's the sea. So pretty well looking forward to that one um, for sure. If I just shoot over here for a minute, we have... Eight days to the halving. Can you believe that? I'm working it out that I've got two more shows next Monday and next Thursday, uh, and then we've got the halving. So, blimey. I mean, it may end up being a bit of a nothing burger, but for Bitcoiners, every four years, that's pretty darn exciting when they cut the block reward in half. So, pretty excited um, about that one. Okay, so back over to me again. Before we get into the show in earnest, let's see who we've got in the house. And I've already spotted Pubby in the house. Pubby, it is so good to see you, man. It really is. You're such an important dude. You're such a busy dude. You haven't got time to grace little shows like mine. So, Pubby, great to have you with us, mate. Really is. Um, JB Bitcoiner, John G's in the house. Uh, Bitcoin to the moon. Go to sleep, dude. Bitcoin Meister is with us. Uh, Stephen Redding, Stuart Griffiths. Yorkie Bitcoiner, Elaine Mrs. UK, uh, Stuart Griffiths, uh, Vinnie Rondo, Mr. 60, Michael Webber's with us, Vinnie Lee, good to see you, Jason Jones, good to see you from sunny Cannock, UK, been to Cannock many times, good to see you, Rocky Palumbo is with us, IOM Driving, good to see you, uh, yeah, I've done Pubby, Mike Dooley is in the house, just doing a quick check, Matthew Underhill from the Bitcoin book. Uh, I don't think I've missed anybody. If you want a shout out, type in UK Bitcoin Master. I'll gladly give you a shout out. I don't know what's gone wrong with my camera. It keeps going blurred. I can see it, but I can't change it. I've changed none of the settings. It just keeps going blurred. Um, we were a, we were a person an in person meetup um, last weekend, and one of the guys there is a, a school teacher who's also a Bitcoiner. 
and wrote a book. And he kindly gave us all copies to read. And I said, because of my show, I would read it. And if I felt it was worthwhile, I would give it a shout out on the show. And I'm going to do that. Look at that. Check it out on Amazon. The link will be in the show notes afterwards called Unchained. Why you can no longer afford to ignore Bitcoin. I read it in about three or four hours. Very easy read. And I've got to say, um, Adam Richard John, really good job, sir. Really, really good job. The sort of book, a bit like Matthew Underhill's book, the Bitcoin book, another great book. There's more and more of them coming out now. Um, I just needed to give Adam a shout out for this one because I did read it and it's absolutely superb, I've got to say. So Adam Richard John, shout out to you. And after the show's aired, I'll put a link in the show notes for anybody that wants to buy it in paperback or in Kindle version. Um, they're the two options at the moment. Um, he's only just launched the book. Um, I would imagine at some point, that, you know, it'll expand on that. But um, well worth checking out, people. Just once more uh, for Adam. There you go. Unchained. While well, you can no longer afford to ignore Bitcoin. Really, really good book. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I said to Adam um, when we were DMing, I said, for me, the sign of a good book is firstly, the content's got to be right. But secondly, it's got to keep me it's got to keep my attention. And I found myself not wanting to put it down so much so that I was reading it before uh, Monday's show. And I wanted to get to a point and I ended up chasing my tail to get the show set up. So I really enjoyed it. So there we go. Right. I want to get into the show. Uh, welcome, everyone. Don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. I would also encourage you to check that you are still subscribed because for some reason, YouTube's stupid algorithm just randomly unsubscribes people uh, to, 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 to um, you know, channels. So well worth checking that out. OK, so I wanted to get into the show in earnest. And to start the show, I'm going to run a short video clip because, you know, they are crap in their pants when you get the Bank of England governor, just like the Federal Reserve's uh, chair, Jay Powell, starting to do TikTok or Instagram videos. And I saw Jordan Water, Jordan Walker tweet this out yesterday, and I just had to share it with you all. So take a look at this. It's only, I think, about 40 seconds. But, you know, this is what they have um, stooped to because they know they are losing the fight here. Here we go. Hi, I'm Andrew Bailey, and I'm the Governor of the Bank of England, and I'm here to launch our new Instagram channel. We're going to use it to tell you some of the things that go on in the Bank of England that you may not know about what we get up to, and yeah. some things about the bank's history. What we get up to. But I've got one good bit of news. You're not going to be seeing a lot of me on this. It's all about the bank, which is more important. Thank goodness for that. Um, I mean, this is, look, there's an old saying, isn't there? If you can't beat them, join them. And they can't beat Bitcoin. As they can't beat Bitcoin, it is rolling on regardless. TikTok next block. So, you know, Jay Powell's done it. Now the governor of the Bank of England have done it, and they're just trying to pull the audiences in because they know they're losing this fight. They really, really are. Um, Bitcoin to the moon, go to sleep, man. No, I don't mean it. You know, I can't believe, you know, it's about three o'clock in the morning just gone and you're awake. You should be sound asleep. You've got a young family. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. So back over to the desktop. So as always, a few news articles. I've got a couple of charts I want to share with you. Um, this is for the, anyone who's in doubt that this thing is in liftoff mode. You want to have a look at what's coming up right now. The first one is this one here. Um, this is from Nidig. And look at the chart there. And what you're looking at is um, the sort of green line is halving one. The dark blue is halving two. The yellow is halving three. And the orange with the circle around it is halving four, which is where we are right now. And if you don't think that pattern is going to continue and if not go higher, then I don't know what planet you're on. Listen, I don't have a financial background. I'm not giving any financial advice here. But everything I look at, everything worth looking at tells me that this thing is going upwards, and he's in the chat. Bitcoin is going to the moon. There's just one. 
Here's another one. I stole this from Invest Answers, so hope he doesn't mind. Uh, tarted it up a little bit. But look at the runs from 2011 to 2013 at the top. 14 to 17, 18 to 21, 22 to 25. And it obviously stops there early 24. Do you think, looking at the three above it, that all of a sudden this one isn't going to keep going just the same as they are? We are already sat at 70,200. And if you took that as logarithmic, you could safely say that could easily quadruple in this bull cycle, which would give you a just under a quarter of a million dollar Bitcoin. Is that a good investment from where it is today in terms of the Bitcoin price? I should flip in say so. You've got this one. For those people that say, ah, you'll lose money in Bitcoin is too volatile. What you are looking at here is everything in green is where people are in profit that bought Bitcoin. So pretty well everyone, apart from a few that may have bought the, the top a few weeks ago, 74, and are down slightly. But as Bitcoin Meister always said when I was following his channels uh, in the early days, and he's in our chat, and that is Bitcoin always returns to his all-time high. Get your head around the 2010, 210,000 block theory, and if you hold for one, two, three epochs, you will always, no, I can't say you will always, you should always um Improve your investment, let's just say that. And then this one, if I may, and this is the Bitcoin addresses with a balance of 0 0.01 BTC or more, the orange line. And look at it. The plebs are stacking. Regular people are stacking. People are realizing I've got to uh, get hold of some of this and get myself off of zero. So all the charts, everything I'm looking at, listening to, watching, is all screaming at me, this thing is going to go parabolic. And again, I don't know if it is or it isn't. And if you look at the thumbnail, I'll cover something a bit later around that. And that is, I remember, if you look at the chart of 2017, February, I can't remember the date, but in February, it was about just under 1,000, 900. And then it went to just under 20 K. So give or take a little bit. That's a 20x return. And I've said it before with no institutions in, all with regular retail people like you and I. So if we did that in 2017, when all the banks were pushing back, the ESG narrative and everything else that was going on, the ICO craze, the pump and dump schemes that were going on, if we could 20x back then, as we've moved forward to 2024, are you telling me that that isn't possible again with these ETFs that are piling in? Here's another one. Japanese firm Meta Planet to add 659 million in Bitcoin to its share treasury and its shares saw 90% in response. On April the 8th, Meta Planet, a firm based in Japan, disclosed its strategy to bolster its treasury treasury with a billion yen, or you've seen the figure there in Bitcoin, the decision has garnered backing from a new slew of partners and investors, including Sora Ventures, UTO, uh, UTXO Management, and Morgan Creek Capital's Mark Yusko, amongst others. This strategic pivot is not just about embracing digital assets, but also about pioneering a future where finance meets innovation at its core, uh, they said. Um, whatever that is all about, I believe that all this is going to do is pile drive Bitcoin in an upward direction. Breaking billion dollar Bitcoin ETS with massive funding from China to start end of April in Hong Kong. Can BTC price reach 100,000 in Q2? Whether it will or whether it won't is immaterial to me. But the more these institutions come in, the game theory is really hotting up now. And you are if you don't think that other institutions are watching what these do and thinking, 
Should we? Shouldn't we? Shall we wait? Do we want to be last in? That's game theory at play, people. The whole thing is coming, I tell you. Um, following the footsteps of the US SEC, which previously approved Bitcoin spot ETFs, Hong Kong is poised to launch its own Bitcoin spot ETF uh, by the end of April. Well, crikey, we're nearly halfway through April now. As highlighted in an earlier CNF post, this move symbolizes a significant shift towards integrating the into regulated financial services, let's say Bitcoin. The Hong Kong Securities uh, Regulatory Commission has rapidly approved key players, including Harvest International and China Asset Management, for, for these in, innovative, I hate that blooming word, in, 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 innovative ETFs. Flipping horrible word. So you got that going on. If that weren't enough, Crypto Slate, BlackRock and Fidelity's Bitcoin ETFs make history with record streaks of inflows. BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin Trust and the Fidelity Wise Origin Bitcoin Trust 2 have broken another record by becoming two of the top 20 ETF funds with the longest streak of continuous flows of all time. Bloomberg ETF analyst Eric Balchunas observed on April the 8th that the two spot ETFs have seen continuous flows since their launch 59 days ago. IBIT and FBTC have outperformed 99.9% .9 of all ETFs ever launched since the market began in the 1990s. There were roughly 9,000 ETFs globally at the end of 2022. Torup Hoddle, Bram VDB, good to see you guys. Daniel Street, welcome. I don't think there's anybody else but saying hi to you guys. And Bitcoin to the moon is still flipping pounding. There you go. So it's all going on. Everything is positive. Mind you, there are a few negatives. You've got stupid Things like this. Bitcoin seen below 20K in a consumer survey by Deutsche Bank. I just wonder who the hell they are survey surveying. Blind people? Deutsche Bank, a German multinational investment bank, surveyed consumers regarding Bitcoin's future trajectory. The results show a divided sentiment with about one third of respondents anticipating the world's first cryptocurrency to plummet below 20k by the end of the year. Oh, for goodness flipping sake, you would need a black swan event and it still wouldn't go down to 20. A 50% drop like something that happened in March 2020 would only take the thing down to 35k. Where do they drag these people up from? And I'm not a financial guy. I'm not a clever guy by any stretch of the imagination, but this is absolutely absurd to me. It goes on to say, over the th over the 3,600 individuals surveyed, only 10% predict Bitcoin will surpass 75K by December close. Well, we'll see how that plays out, yeah? Uh, meanwhile, 40% are confident in the cryptocurrency's prospects. In contrast, 38% anticipate anticipated its eventual disappearance, anticipating Bitcoin to lose its total value and market relevance. It's like, oh, for goodness sake, they've lost their marbles. Okay, here's one. Costa Rica explores regulation amid growing Bitcoin adoption. So the tax haven, I believe you might call it, where people like Peter Schiff and others are, maybe they're now going to clamp down on cryptos more. See, this is the problem. My wife and I have this conversation all the time. And that is, yes, you could jump ship and go and move somewhere. But, you know, take El Salvador, for example. What happens if all of a sudden there's a change of regime at the top? What might happen? I'm not saying it could be bad. If they can see that it's good for the economy, they might continue that. We might go and move to, say, Portugal or Madeira. And then all of a sudden there's a change at the top and they make those changes or they're lent on by the EU or whatever it might be. So we just don't know what the future holds. For me, it is just literally about being nimble. So what did they say? Costa Rica finds itself at a crossroads as it contemplates proposed legislation that could potentially limit its citizens' ability to use Bitcoin for everyday transactions. And is, is, that, is that where Francis uh, Bull Bitcoin is down in Costa Rica? I think they are down there. Is it Bitcoin jungle? 
Um, somebody put something in the chat. I think it is. Um, the story of Costa Rica Bitcoin regulation shared by renowned Bitcoin technology firm Jan3 um, on social media uh, platform X underscores the ongoing debate surrounding the legal framework governing digital asset ownership, trading and investment with the Latin American uh, nation. So, um, you know, it's fluid, isn't it? We are still so flipping early to all of this is very, very fluid. So I think keep all the options open. Mike, welcome. Good to see you just jumped in the chat. Uh, from the block here, Bitcoin long-term holder begin to ease off profit taking, said Glassnode. Here's my take on that. Who the hell is taking profits right now at the lead up to the major bull run? Are they barking nuts or what? No one should be taking profits that understands this thing and understands where it's going. But of course, there's always going to be some that maybe it gets back to its all-time high and they want to take it off the table because all they can see is, I want to get their money back and exit this damn Bitcoin thing. They just don't understand. They haven't taken the time to learn. They haven't read books like this from Adam John. Really good book again, if you're late. Um, that will be in the show notes afterwards. Um, so what did the, the block say? Long-term holder profit-taking is tapering off after Bitcoin reached its March all-time high above 73,000, according to a Glassnode report. However, the market is in a price discovery phase where price corrections are historically commonplace, the report added. Yeah, totally agree with that one. Okay, so, you know, the news is mixed out there. But for me personally, um, this show is just giving me a platform to rant with my views um, and try and help just one other person not get dragged down through the pump and dump scheme crap coin route and then lose their families harder and dosh. So that's what I do it for. And I tried to bring articles to you guys that maybe some haven't found. I know a lot of this is common knowledge if you're following a, a decent group of uh, Bitcoiners. But I found this one from Rizzo, this tweet, and I love it. Uh, a guy called Joe Weisenthal tweeted in April 2013. When Bitcoin is over, over, it will be very fun picking through the horrendous economic arguments that were made to justify it. Oh, dear Joe, how wrong you got that. And as Rizzo tweeted, that was when Bitcoin was at $200. Here's one more chart just backing up a tweet, actually, from HeyApollo.com. Look at the halvings of 12, 16, 20 with a different viewpoint. And if you don't believe that this um, bull run after the halving is going to do the same, then again, I just don't have a clue what planet you're on. That thing is going upwards big time. Trust me. And, you know, what do I know? I don't know anything. Glenn McCann, good to see you. Always love it when Dublin joins us. Um, there you go. So uh, I found this tweet from Samson Mao. Now, it's an old one, but read it. In 2017... And this is the this is the theory behind my thumbnail. In 2017, it took nine months for Bitcoin to go from 1K to 20K, give or take a few dollars. The block subsidy was 12.5. There was a lot more Bitcoin sloshing around on exchanges. Mining was boiling the oceans and there was zero inst institutional money coming in. 1K to 20K is a 20X. I really believe we can 20x again. I really believe that. Now, whether we do that in this, you know, the end after this halving, the end of this bull run, I don't have a magic wand. But if we can do it in 2017 with no institutions and all the negative press, the Larry Finks of the world weren't in this thing. Fidelity's arcs, they weren't in it. There were no ETFs. You know, there were no banks pro this. Now, a lot of banks are realizing if we don't get in, we're going to miss we're going to miss the train here. So this game theory is really kicking off, in my opinion. You don't need to be brainy to see this. You just got to take a lateral view of it all and say to yourself, well, is it all negative news out there or does everything look like? the game theory is starting to happen. So that is why I created that thumbnail. I'm hoping nobody thinks it's clickbait. I always said I'd never use clickbait, but it comes from this tweet because I absolutely believe that Bitcoin can uh, 20x. 
What else have we got? Here's one from LinkedIn that Coinbase tweeted. Uh, Coindesk, I'm sorry. What happens if Chinese investors looking for the next haven for their wealth shift their focus from gold and overseas real estate to Bitcoin? We might soon find out. Couldn't agree more. Here's another LinkedIn from Mickey Koss. A group of casual observers who don't know what they're looking at does not make a market. If you're waiting for Bitcoin to fall back to 20K, you're probably going to have a bad time. I'm old enough to remember when a prominent academic called for a negative Bitcoin price. It has since risen several hundred percent. Wisdom of the crowds only works when people have skin in the game and understand what they're talking about. Get in there, Rocky Palumbo. And I'm hoping you'll agree with everything that I'm sharing uh, with you. And then this one from the Bitcoin therapist. We're at a point in the Bitcoin cycle where no one is really paying attention. I agree with that. No one's paying attention. You see the memes on Twitter. Everyone's yawning. For me, it's like, wake me up when we hit 100K. I might start to get excited. Why? Because I've been in this seven years. I rode it up to 20K, back to 3K, up to 64, 69, back to 15 and a half. Now we're at 70. Nothing phases me. It could be a million and drop to 600,000. And it won't phase me. Why? Skin in the game, people. I've been down the rabbit hole long enough. I've learned enough to know that I'm chilled out and calm. And this thing over time is going not to the moon. It's going to the stars and then through a black hole out into galaxies we don't even know exist. It is going there. Price is consolidating ahead of another parabolic run. Shifty P is making a fool of himself. And hodlers are smiling as we walk down the street, surrounded by people who are completely oblivious. I couldn't agree with that more. And if that weren't good enough with everything I've just said, my video of the day is just about to come up. I love the Bitcoiners, the true Bitcoiners that are getting out there on CNBC and Fox and others and they're telling the Bitcoin story and they're putting the media right on Bitcoin versus crypto and all the other crap. And I found this one. I thought I've got to run this for those that haven't seen it. Maybe many of you have. But uh, Natalie Brunel was recently on Fox. And I just thought I'd run this clip because she nails it every time. You know, it's been such a blessing to be able to stack at the at the lower prices because we are back at these high levels. And this is the first time we've seen a new all time high before a Bitcoin having in a cycle. So things could get very interesting, especially because in previous cycles, we would hit a new all time high about six to 12 months after a having. And with the consistently strong demand for those spot Bitcoin ETFs you, you mentioned that are wildly popular, I don't see how we don't hit six figures sometime soon um, unless we have some massive economic contraction on the macro side. But if we do, guess what they'll have to do? They're going to have to print. And every time they print, they're just the perfect marketing team for why we need Bitcoin. Well, here's the thing. There is regulatory clarity around Bitcoin. There is only regulatory uncertainty around the rest of crypto. And I think a lot of people are disappointed by politicians in general on both sides who overpromise and underdeliver, all the while enriching themselves to the point of generational wealth while they opine how sad it is that we no longer have a middle class. And one of the best things about Bitcoin is it is inherently apolitical. It removes the power that comes with being able to manipulate money and print limitless units. And it really unchains capital from the prison of politics. So no matter who gets elected, I think Bitcoin is going to shine. Look, when I entered this space, I was confused. Why are people saying Bitcoin is so different? And I, I experimented and then I really learned Bitcoin is the only one that is truly decentralized. That's why it's the only one I focused on. It is secured by the world's most powerful computing network. It is a commodity, not a security. It is a cyber fortress of encrypted energy, whereas all the other tokens have made trade-offs in order to achieve more functionality or speed. And there's something called the blockchain trilemma, the mm -hmm. three prongs. They are decentralization, security, and scalability. And we have a saying, it's pick two because you can never have all three. Mm -hmm. And most of the mm -hmm. other blockchains are optimized for scale. Let's be faster than Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin is purposefully 
fully optimized for security and decentralization, why it, which is why it's the only one that can serve as global money. And in layers, it achieves scalability through things like the Lightning Network. So the larger blockchain token space I see is mostly digital equities, none of which can compete as global money. Bitcoin has those superior monetary properties, which is why we keep saying over and over again, when it comes to money, there is no second best. She's brilliant, isn't she? You know, she nails it every time. And that was Fox business, you know. So the message is getting out there, people. It really is, which, you know, massively exciting. And kudos to Natalie for, you know, shouting out the, the properties of Bitcoin and why Bitcoin, not crypto, absolutely uh, nailed it. OK, very, very quickly, if I may, um, I found this quote. And I want you to think about this if you're brand new to all of this. A year from now, you'll wish you'd started today. If you're not off a zero and you're finding this channel, whenever you're finding it, get off of zero, people, because the, the, the wrong place to be today is zero. It is now quickly becoming clear that you are irresponsible if you have zero Bitcoin. When I got into Bitcoin, it was your... It, irresponsible if you hold that silly Bitcoin, how the narrative has changed. Okay, so this coming Saturday, we have another installment of our 21 Million Club. And I'm going to explain this briefly for any regulars that would like to become part of that club. It is not a send me a link and I'll join. It is not that. It is a select group that I select personally of people that are Bitcoin only, they support my channel, my shows in the live chat uh, as often as I can. they can throughout the weeks, months, and years. And it is somebody that is going to join that on a regular basis throughout the year. And once a month, we have a Zoom call. Um, we had, tw I believe, 12 of us on um, last month, and I think it was a few more than that uh, in January. And it was absolutely superb, and they always are. So if anybody is interested in becoming part of the 21 Million Club, all you need to do is go into the show notes. You will find my link tree link where it takes you to all my social media. You can spin down to the bottom, and there is a place there where you can drop me a message, and we can start communicating. But I'm going to stress again, it is not a, I want to join this Saturday, send me a link. doesn't work like that. I'm keeping it select. And those that don't support it throughout the years, they will just drop out at the end of each year, and the new people that come in will um, obviously stay with us, providing they fit the criteria that I've chosen to set out but we've got some great people that joined the 21 million club notwithstanding rocky palumbo in the house is just a, an incredibly brainy clever guy when it comes to bitcoin and we learn some great stuff um, when rocky is talking on the 21 million club so um if you're interested like i said go into the show notes find my link tree and you can drop me a message um, if you want to support the show and you don't have to i'm going to keep saying this you do not have to Thank you to everyone that's bought me a cup of coffee. Many people have. Um, Raymond has bought me some more again on the last one. Raymond, I did send a message thanking you. But in case you didn't get it, thank you. I appreciate every donation. I don't run the show to make money. It's not monetized on YouTube, and it could be. I'm not doing it for that reason, because if I do it for that reason, then I'm leaning to maybe taking a sponsor or two that ain't true Bitcoin, and I don't want to do that. Um, I allow Best of Exmoor to sponsor me because Chris is a hardened Bitcoiner, been down the rabbit hole the same time as I have, um, and um, I'm trying to help him. And obviously, he's helping me by supporting and sponsoring the show. So there's some Sats addresses. There's a buy me a cup of coffee with crappy feet address. But again, you don't have to. That's it, people. Uh, 34 minutes. We're done and dusted. Thank you all for joining. As always, please like before you leave. Subscribe if you're new and hit the bell button. Thank you for listening. Those that listen on the move on the podcast, I appreciate every one of you, even though I can't see or know that you're there. I do appreciate it. Um, I'm going to go uh, on Thursday. Oh, sorry, on Thursday. I will catch many of you on Saturday for the 21 Million Club. Dead excited about that. Um, on Monday, I'll be back 6 p.m. London with another regular show. And then Thursday, and then it's the halving. It's like, oh, my Picasso. How quick has that come round? So as always, thanks for your support. Do go back into the comments afterwards. Look, 
Many of you do, but many of you don't. If you want to support me, help this channel, then we get a bigger reach so we help more noobs not get wrecked. It's important you take 30 seconds out of your life. Go into the show notes after the show live stream is finished. Refresh your browser and leave me a comment. I respond to every one of them while the channel is still relatively small. And that then spanks YouTube's algorithm and keeps this video current on Google searches for longer. I'll catch some of you on Saturday, most of you on Monday. As always, here come my social media links. Thanks again for your support.